I'm Carl Stanton. I currently work as a consultant designing communication control systems in the mass transit industry. I'm also an industrial designer and alum of Philadelphia University and obviously public transit geek. So you've all seen this map. This is SEPTA's map, commuter rail, subway, light rail trolleys, buses are not pictured. Has its issues, but together it forms one of the most comprehensive and best used transit systems in the United States. Also one of the oldest. Between the subway and the Narstown High Speed Line, uh, those lines carry over 100 million people per year all over Philadelphia, over 350,000 people per day. As you can see here, fifth busiest system in the entire United States, which lines up nicely with our population because we're also the fifth largest city in population in the United States. Commuter rail, same thing, fifth busiest, carries uh, over 100,000 people per day all over suburban Philadelphia and over 30 million people per year. These top six agencies here all run old commuter rail systems. All, most of their track was laid before 1900. Philadelphia also used to have hundreds of miles of trolleys covering everywhere. This map is from the mid 1940s, shows the height of trolley coverage in center city Philadelphia. However, with the rise of the automobile, most of these trolleys were converted into buses toward the middle of the 20th century. Today, the only trolleys that remain, for those of you who ride SEPTA, you know this, are subway surface, two suburban trolleys, as well as the resurrected Gerard Avenue trolley, which runs with vintage 1930s restored trolley cars, which you haven't seen, I highly recommend uh, checking those out. This is SEPTA's modern transit system, and there are some routes in dotted lines. Those SEPTA used to run service to Reading, Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Newtown, Pennsylvania, and Newark, New Jersey uh, in, the, in the 70s when they took over these commuter rail operations. However, in the early 1980s, SEPTA decided to discontinue the, all of their diesel services, which meant that those services to Bethlehem and to Reading and to Newtown and to Newark, New Jersey were discontinued. There have been a variety of proposals to restore these services over the years, but nothing has quite come together yet, largely due to land and cost disputes. So what SEPTA could have been and what it can still be. Uh, during the early part of the 20th century, there was a grand master plan for what, tra what transit in Philadelphia was going to be, in particular, subway lines. MFL opened in 1907. Pennsylvania and Reading Railroad were laying track. This is what that master plan looks like, modern rendering of it. Had all these subway lines been built, riding public transit in Philly would be a lot different than it is now. This picture is a modern representation of a plan from 1915, and World War I is the main reason it didn't happen. When the Broad Street Line was built in the early 1920s, two connections to future lines were built. One just north of Erie and one just north of Alney. As well as, under the Henry Avenue Bridge, there are two subway box tunnels for a future connection to Upper Roxborough that obviously never came to fruition. On the south part of the Broad Street Line, there was a junction built between Tasker Morris and Snyder stations for Passyunk Avenue extension. Sadly, none of these subway lines have been built, however, there are several service improvements and subway extensions that are be, have been planned and are in the works. The first one is the much maligned SEPTA key. It's SEPTA's new fare system uses contactless smart card technology. Uh, it's been delayed by a couple of years. This year is finally beginning to be implemented and will bring SEPTA into the realm of modern transit system payments. SEPTA key when it's fully implemented, it will be one of the most advanced and comprehensive payment systems in the entire United States. It will allow payment with smartphones and contactless credit cards, as well as it will be, SEPTA will be the only transit agency in the United States with the ability to use a contactless smart card on commuter rail, as well as on subway or bus. King of Prussia, largest employment center outside of Philadelphia, currently has bus service, but that bus service is very crowded and plagued by the very unpleasant traffic on I-76 and local roads. There's a planned extension spur of the North South High Speed Line to King of Prussia. It's in the final planning stages, estimated to be completed in the early 2020s. 
the Navy Yard has recently undergone a massive redevelopment. And extension of the Navy Yard has been studied a few times. Uh, and currently, there's another environmental impact study being done. This is uh, also estimated to be completed in the early 2020s. And of all these projects, probably the most likely to happen. For more than 40 years, there have been various schemes to improve transit on Roosevelt Boulevard, ranging from a subway station that was built and then torn down to a variety of other things. Currently, SEPTA has a plan to build bus rapid transit on Roosevelt Boulevard using a dedicated bus lane. Uh, this transit route is planned but will not happen immediately. High speed rail in the Northeast, also been planned forever. If it ever comes to fruition, be a game changer for Philadelphia. With travel times, it would be 30 minutes to New York City, 45 minutes to Washington, D.C., hour and a half to Boston. It would change where you could live, where you could work. Um, this plan also, one of these plans also includes building a 12 mile long tunnel underneath Philadelphia and putting the high speed rail station at Jefferson instead of 30th Street. Uh, has some advantages, but it's exorbitant cost and disconnecting the high speed rail from the rest of the network probably means the 30th Street will remain the transit hub. So, I know that was fast. Thanks for listening. Uh, my email's up here. You can also tweet at me, and I will be here for the Q&A. Thank you.